Premier coming in clutch there. Thought I was about to bonk. I get so emotional, man, when I, when I start to struggle on the bike. It's so bizarre. I don't, I don't get like that with running. I don't know what it is. Currently Thursday morning, I have just finished up my nine kilometer easy run. I'm gonna get this protein shake down my neck and then pack my bags and my bike because we are going on a solo road trip up to Wales to do some bike riding. And more specifically, we are gonna be staying on Anglesey and doing the Tour de Mon route, which is basically the tour of Anglesey route. It is a 100 mile, yeah, 100 mile loop of the island, so. I mean, it should be pretty nice. It's currently raining at the minute, but I'm hoping by the time we're riding tomorrow, it's dried and you know, maybe even the sun might come out and bless us with some good weather, but we'll see how we get on. I am planning to do the full route, which is 160K. That'll be my longest ride. Whether we can get around that or not, we'll see. But if it is shite weather, then I'll we'll just cut it short and do a, a shorter route because there's a few different options available on the island. Should be really nice roads as well. We've ridden there uh, one time in the summer last year and it was spot on, so. I'm excited for this. I'm gonna be staying in a little glamping pod as well. Going bougie this time around. Get this down, pack my bags and then we'll hit the road. Slightly less exciting news, my Land Rover is officially a goner. Picked it up from Halfers this morning. I took it in yesterday because it had a brake issue and they've quoted me a thousand quid to fix it. It needs like new discs, new pads, new calipers. It is just doomed. I spent a grand on it last month on an engine issue it had and I just cannot bring myself to spend any more money on this car that's worth about 40p. So I'm gonna to have to scrap it and get something more reliable, which means for this trip, we are again in Jade's little fartmobile. She's kindly lent it me again. She's got a VW up. So getting the bike in there is a squeeze, but we'll make it work. Nutrition wise, I'm gonna be aiming for about, you know, 50, 60 grams of carbs per hour and 160 kilometers is gonna take me about seven hours. So I'm gonna need, what, 400 and something grams of carbs altogether. I'm gonna take a mix of the super gels, the standard gels, chews, and I'm gonna fill two bottles up with the super carbs, which is 80 grams of carbs each, which is just a game changer for me, if I'm honest. And then I'm gonna try and pack like a sandwich or something or at least stop for a sandwich en route somewhere at a cafe because I'm gonna need some proper food as well. I can't just live on gels all day. Got a 20% off code in the description of the video. If you are interested in any of the OTE nutrition and live by the stuff for running and cycling, it's decent. Kit wise, it's all gonna be Rafa. They actually sent over some aero jersey and aero bib shorts uh, the other day, but I don't think the Welsh weather is suitable for that at the minute. And they sent over these go faster sunnies. How fast do I look in them? They look serious, man. I'll bring these with me. It's enough faff and about for now. I'll catch you in Anglesey where it's gonna be 25 degrees, blue skies and sun, obviously. Touched down on Anglesey. I am just stopping at the Big Asda to get a few bits for tomorrow, some sandwiches or something like that to bring with me on the ride. And then I'm gonna go check in at the uh, little bougie gaff I've got. Right, touched down in the gaff. Pretty smart in it. It's just like a little glamping pod, wooden pod. It's got everything I need, really. I'll show you around in a second, but my god it's windy up here i'm staying at the top of the island near a little lighthouse called south stack if you've ever been you'll know it is just never not windy so i might go out on the bike in a bit i might not i'm not sure if i can be asked going battling the wind at this point hopefully it'll subside for tomorrow anyway let me show you around the gaff so that's what it looks like from the outside come on in it's got all the kitchen amenities amenities whatever you say that word kettle microwave fridge ideal i bought some food for breakfast tomorrow i'm going to be on the porridge and stuff so good having a, a kettle that'll sort me out there double bed and then the bathroom with a built-in shower and a toilet winner only minor issue is i don't know where i'm going to fit the bike because there ain't that much space in here we'll figure something out because it ain't staying in the car overnight that's for sure it can just go in the bed and i'll sleep on the floor or something
I just got done with a little 20k spin and as you can tell the wind is lethal. It was uh, ragdolling me out there, a bit sketchy on parts as well, especially when I'm going downhill. On that SL8 as well, because it weighs about one kilogram, you do feel a bit like jittery on it. Uh, maybe I just need to get used to it a bit more, but I'm hoping it dies down for tomorrow because if it's like this, I ain't going to be able to manage 160k. I wonder if there's another route I can do that's more like down the middle of it but it might be a bit more sheltered. I'll have a look now anyway. Right, for dinner I have gone pretty rogue. We have got the mug shot roast chicken pasta and the big version of the chicken super noodles. Not quite gourmet, but we just need some carbs to be honest, just to fuel up for tomorrow. And then for breakfast we have got the fuel porridge, salted caramel flavor, never had this before, but I am getting into my porridge, so we'll see how this is. This is the problem when I do these trips, I don't eat right. I'm fueling for a 160k bike ride on a pot noodle basically, it just shambles. I mean it tastes alright to be fair, I'm just not convinced it's going to cut the mustard for tomorrow. Mm. Might have to go find something a touch more substantial. Winding down for the evening now, I've eaten, the bike is inside, it's pretty cozy, I'm nice and warm. I'm just gonna crack on with editing this video you're watching uh, and also stick some antique road show on. I'll check back in in the morning to see what the weather's saying and then I will decide if I'm gonna do the full 100 mile route or the shorter, more sheltered 77 mile route. Morning. It is half seven in the morning out here and it is a beautiful looking day by the looks of things at least anyway. Blue skies, couple of clouds, sun is out over there, wind is still high but we're going to go for it and see what happens. Worst comes to worst, I can cut the route short and just come back the way I've came. But it feels like it's too nice a day to not go for a big ride. Jets are out. I think I'm cycling near a uh, RAF base actually, which makes a lot of sense. Anyway, about 15 kilometers in today. The reason I've come out to Anglesey is basically because I have the Dirty Reaver event happening on the 20th of April. And I've not really had a chance to get too many big rides in because I've been prioritizing the running for the Paris Marathon, which is a few weeks before. And I wanted to get on some nice, smooth flowing country lanes to test out the SL8 properly. I tested it out the other day on uh, the roads near mine and they're a bit rough and bumpy and you can feel every single kink in the road on this thing. It is a very lively ride. But on this smooth stuff, it feels unbelievably nice. I'm just riding right through the RAF base now, actually. Have a look at this. That's some kind of fighter jet. That's sick. And then there's a jet flying in the air over there. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. So far so good, we're 30 kilometers in, in just over an hour. It is remarkably nice out here, I gotta say. We're just making our way down to the south of the island now. I'm gonna have my first gel. I'm gonna keep on top of the nutrition because I just don't wanna be bonking by myself out here. So, the bike, the SL8. The first thing you'll notice about the bike when you get on it is the position is so aggressive. I feel like I'm really leaning into it. Compared to the gravel bike where I'm more upright, but I think I'll get used to this over time. At the minute, I find myself creeping forward on the saddle a bit to like reduce the, uh, the reach, but it ain't too bad. I think after a couple of rides, we'll be sound. And after the position, the first thing you'll notice when you start riding it is the gearing is so nice. It runs Saram Rival ETAP, which is like an electronic group set from Saram. I'm coming from the Saram one by Mechanical, so this just feels smooth as butter in comparison to be honest. It's a two by setup as well so I've just got more range in the gears, makes things easier especially at the top end that's where I was lacking with the one by on the gravel. And what I noticed after the position and after the gearing is my god this bike moves and it moves quick.
60 kilometers in now, just going past that village with the longest name in the world or whatever it is. Look at that. 10 quid if you can pronounce yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I pity the that step to me though. Float too clean, I'm bite by new tuxedos. Been the shit since now, later popping and buying hot Cheetos. The free throw, easy. Please believe me, baby. Bought a Tesla, bought a Rolex watch, and I ain't dreaming, baby. Scheming, baby. Dean that raised me. Really from the section with them killers. Drug dealers, thug. Never got a hug from pops, they need some love. Lick Stopped off at a little cafe just for a quick coffee and buy some little castle that's pretty interesting. I'm on the southeast part of the island now, so you can see Snowdonia right in the distance. I can't get over how nice the weather is. I've got so lucky with it. It's a bit windy now I'm on the coast, but it's gorgeous still. So yeah, the bike, it is rapid. It just flies, especially downhills and that. And on smooth surfaces, it is really quick and responsive as well. I didn't understand what people meant when they said responsive bike but I get it now. As soon as you put the power down, you're moving. You are moving with it. I'm also running slightly slimmer tires. So I've got 26 mil S-Works turbo tires, I think they're called. But because of the way the, the rim is, it's actually more like a 28. So ideally I would like to put some 30s on there and go tubeless with it, just to mitigate any punctures and that sort of stuff. Let me tell you, this is the life. Cannot wait for summer. Oh, that was hanging. Just started to feel really faint halfway up a climb. You know, when you just go weak and you start to feel a bit dizzy. Hanging, nearly 100K in though now. Sun's still out and look where we are. Whew. Peaceful. Oh, Super Gel's just revived me from the dead. Rough 10 minutes that, but I'm back in the game. Let's have it. Onwards we go to the north of the island. I have these temporary little bonks. Quite a lot on these longer rides, especially when I'm on my own. It's weird, I start getting all emotional. I don't know what it is, really odd. And then I'll have some sugar and I'll be back uh, feeling all right again. It's out of nowhere, strange. Anyway, we're just going down these country lanes now. The road surface ain't the best here, but I'm sure we'll get onto the nice coastal roads uh, soon enough. The roads are really nice on this east coast. Quite a lot of cars, but the surface is perfect. Undulating up and down, really smooth. Making for some nice riding. Well over 100k in now, just polished off a full on chippy. Two jumbo sausages, chips and gravy. Interested to see how that one sits on the stomach. Legs are feeling a bit knackered. Morale's quite low at the minute. So strange, the peaks and troughs you have on these big bike rides. The wind is killing me here. I feel like I'm cycling into headwinds. There's a lot more climbing than I thought as well. The route said it had 1200 meters of elevation. I've already done 1400 meters and I've still got 25K to go. So it, unless it's all downhill from here, the, the route has lied to me. I spent the last two hours in a wind tunnel, or at least that's what it feels like. All I can hear is the roaring sound of the wind. I'm putting down decent power, but just going nowhere. Get me back to the car. I need a drink, I'm out of liquids. Oh, thank you God for that. Picked up a Mars bar and a water. <sighs> Premier coming in clutch there. Thought I was about to bonk. I get so emotional, man, when I, when I start to struggle on the bike. It's so bizarre. I don't, I don't get like that with running. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's because I'm miles away from the car in a place I don't really know. And if I bonk, I don't know what to do. We 
We're done, 150 k's in the bag. Average speed, 25.7 kilometers an hour. Oh God, that was hard by the end. That last 50 k was killing me. The wind was just brutal, man. Headwinds all the way across the north, back to Holyhead. Sapping my energy, sapping my legs, sapping morale. I need to start doing these with people, these big rides. Like, it's, it's a long time to be out there on your taff. I feel my heart in like overdrive mode. I'm gonna pack the bike away now and hit the road and get back to Manchester and get a Burger King or something en route. I think I've burnt about 32,000 calories. Some really nice roads. Uh, I'll have to come back in the summer. Oh, it's not. Oh. I'm gonna call it a day there. That was a good adventure. I'm gonna be doing more stuff like this. So if you are into this kind of adventure cycling stuff, drop the like button, whatever you're gonna say. Like and subscribe for more videos. <laughs> oh God, get me home, I'm depleted. I'll see you next time.